Obesity is not just overfilled and overstuffed fat cells, but fat spilling into the bloodstream and finding a location to park itself in the organs, the liver, the spleen, and the pancreas. So if you look at normal fat handling after a fat meal, the fat gets absorbed into the circulation directly. It bypasses the liver, and it's called a chylomacron, a fat-filled globule, that tries to find a place to unload its cargo in the muscle or in the fat cell. It becomes much smaller, it's called remnant, it's picked up by the liver and then cleared. By looking at some clinical parameters of low triglycerides and high HDL, I can say that somebody has normal fat handling. We'll get into the other parameters in a bit. Now with obesity and with overconsumption, you have a lot more fat globules or chylomicrons that are absorbed. The trouble is that the fat cells say we are overfilled and we can't take any more. The muscle is lipotoxic. And so these fat-filled globules remain in circulation. And when they remain in circulation, they cause fat deposition in organs that do not and should not have fat. And that's called ectopic fat deposition in the liver, in the muscle, in the pancreas, and the heart. A clinician can recognize this by looking at the fact that these people have high triglycerides. And I say 300 is too big a number. It should be less than 100. Low HDL, markers of insulin resistance, blood markers of liver dysfunction, low levels of a hormone that healthy fat cells elaborate called adiponectin, high blood pressure, and visceral obesity. So let's examine how muscles deal with insulin and food coming in. So as glucose is coming in, insulin recruits a channel called GLUT4 channel to drive the sugar into the muscles the muscles can either burn it for fuel or store it as glycogen. The less insulin required to do this job, the more insulin sensitive you are. If you have a larger muscle mass, you can recruit a lot more GLUT4 channels. You can take in a lot more glucose or sugar before getting insulin resistant. Let's examine the intersection of fat and muscles. As we take in fat and it gets into the bloodstream, you would be surprised to know that insulin is required for fat metabolism as well. And insulin in the setting of an enzyme called LPL drives the fat into the muscle cells. The muscles can either burn it or store it as intramyocellular fat. If you are physically active, younger, you have better muscle insulin sensitivity. You will have more fat in your muscles, but this is accompanied by having a lot more mitochondria that are healthy, that can burn fat. In addition, you have more recruitable GLUT4 to take in glucose. You can make glycogen. And because your fat is in a dynamic flux, it does not get converted to toxic metabolites. On the other hand, if you have obesity, diabetes, or sedentation, the mitochondria are fewer in number, they're diseased, they're not clearing the fat, the fat gets rancid. And as the fat gets rancid, it can get converted to toxic fat molecules called ceramide and diacylglycerol.